To install your parachute, there's a couple of first steps that you're going to need to take care of. Um, first, you're going to want to cut your uh, PVC clear tubing uh, into 300 millimeter long sections, as you see here, and cut out small circles on the top and pre-drill um, where you're going to rivet it down um, in the uh, parachute compartment. These clear tubing uh, kind of acts as a pad for your parachute to make sure it's not rattling around very much, um, but more importantly, in the unlikely event that some water gets into your parachute compartment, um, the parachute itself is not soaking in that water. Um, also, I like to line the rivet heads that are in the parachute compartment with uh, either duct tape will work fine or this is some adhesive uh, insulation foam. Um, just something so that the, they're not constantly chafing on the parachute. Um, we'll talk about these bolt heads in a minute here. That's to mount the uh, rocket holding tube in place. Um, but once you've got your uh, tubes installed and riveted into place down there, um, the next step you're going to do is cut your insulation foam, or sorry, your, your foam padding for your parachute cables here to shape for your uh, uh, cable compartment there. And then you're going to wind up your cables very, very carefully. Um, as you can see here, the thicker cables are on the top of everything. Uh, the thinner cables wind up from bottom to top without twisting around each other, just parallel to each other, um, lower, and then as you go around the rotation, it's slowly spiraling upwards. So um, they cross under, then one layer higher, then the top. So that way, if the parachute were to be deployed, it uh, unravels and can expand upwards. Um, once we get our parachute bag installed, I'll show how to uh, secure the loops. Um, also, you will want to make sure that you've got edge protector installed uh, where everything is going to be passing through, uh, just so that nothing is slowly chafing on those aluminum edges. So once you've gotten to this point here, um, we can install the parachute uh, rocket tube that I've already got installed here, and I'll show that from the other side right now. So once you've gotten the six mounting holes pre-drilled to a quarter inch or 6.4 millimeters for metric guys, um, you're ready to install your rocket tube. So, um, of course, the rocket is not in this tube. It's just the uh, white steel tube. Um, you'll slide it in from the top through these channels, and there are two uh, spacer brackets that go uh, across both of the mounting holes, uh, top and bottom, where the bracket itself mounts. Um, those are important to keep the spacing of the rocket correct in its uh, blowout hole up there, and it keeps everything straight and well aligned. So this is fairly straightforward. It is a little tricky to access the washers and the nuts. Uh, I find that the easiest way to get access to those is um, with actually a magnet. So the manual says to use some tape. That's perfectly acceptable as well, whatever works best for you. Um, I have a magnet, a very small magnet on a extension stick and that slides them in there really easily. So uh, we'll get a top view of this assembly in a minute here and you can see the spacers in place as well as uh, how to get this top um, support bent and installed. Here's the top view of the parachute rocket tube. Um, as you can see down there, if the camera will focus, you can see the spacer right there between the uh, tube flange, the mounting flange there, and the aluminum compartment. Uh, there's one of those on the top as well as the bottom. And you can see that when everything's done properly, that rocket tube should be nice and centered on your blowout uh, panel section here. Um, for this uh, aluminum mounting flange retaining strip up at the top, um, that's fairly straightforward. If you just get a very approximate, well approximated bend, kind of uh, pre-bent into it, you get one bolt in and then just bend it around and place it to the other hole and everything should go smoothly. So now that we've got that done, we are ready to install the uh, parachute bag into the compartment here. So here's the parachute and its bag installed into the compartment for the parachute. 
Um, I use a strap, as you see this red strap here, to lower the bag down into the compartment without having any risk of pulling on uh, any of the critical components um, too hard or accidentally uh, damaging the bag. And then I just put some duct tape to hold the ends of the strap in place. So that way that strap remains there. It's not gonna be in the way of the parachute needing to be deployed. And it's still there if the parachute ever needs to be removed for service or any other reason. So the next step is going to be to pull out this cable here, just enough so that you're able to get it to your uh, canopy cables. And then you'll place the D-ring through the strap and the canopy cables go the Thick right cable is on top, then the two longer, thinner cables are between, and then the left thick cable goes on the bottom of the stack inside this D-ring. Uh, that just kind of keeps everything uh, square, so that way if the parachute were to deploy, it's the four straps come out and line up nicely with this D-ring. And then when you put the pin through the D-ring and thread it in, of course, don't forget to put Loctite on that pin. So now everything is nicely secured in here and uh, we're ready to move to the rocket assembly. Of course the rocket's already in here, but... Now you'll install the rocket into the tube and um, this step is a little bit difficult, but just take your time and be very, very careful, of course, installing this rocket tube, uh, the rocket into the tube. Uh, the two cables come out and hook to the yellow pull cord and the silver pull cord, as you see here with this carabiner. Uh, once again, apply just a dab of Loctite onto that just to make sure it can't come undone uh, during flight or anything. And this installation should be, um, at least this aspect of the installation is fairly straightforward. Uh, once you've got your parachute uh, rocket installed, you place this uh, silicone tube just as kind of like a rattle barrier so it can't uh, rattle around in there. And for your parachute cable installation, um, don't forget the edge protector around the uh, hole that it goes through there. Uh, we're gonna leave this part disconnected until final assembly uh, to avoid any kind of accidental um, pulls. We don't wanna set off the rocket, of course. So uh, as you can see here, uh, the, the heat shrink goes on this end of the cable because it's going to cover up the set screw when all is said and done. Uh, then the cable runs down through here, uh, through this lightning hole here, then through this lightning hole, and then it'll follow your right, uh, rudder, right side rudder cable sleeve the whole way up and out through here. This is it right here. And then it'll go up through there. I'm sorry, it's gonna be really difficult to see that back there, of course. And then out here. So <clears throat> once you've installed your panel for the first time uh, for a test fit, uh, you'll be able to get a length and a final position for your parachute pull cable there. Uh, once you've got that, you'll be able to secure it up in here um, much better and in its appropriate position. Um, most importantly though, for now, or at least for the initial assembly, you'll want to have this length set correctly. So you can see that it lifts up with a little bit of play and it will install perfectly to the rocket here. And um, yeah, like I said, you want to leave yourself a little bit of play there. And everything should be good and ready for final assembly, but that's just about all we're gonna do with the cable for now. Um, like I said, until final assembly. For your blowout skin assembly, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is position the skin on the fuselage so that it's uh, centered and uh, straight. So a uh, couple of things you can do to make sure that it's centered are this cutout here, needs to be centered on this panel here and they don't overlap there's a very small gap there and then you can double check to make sure that the front edge up here is straight to your canopy back here and that's really all you can do of course you do want to make sure that this uh, 
the uh, reinforcement panel is centered over the um, rocket. That's really all you can do to make sure that the position is proper. And uh, it's fairly straightforward though. It should go fairly easily. So the next step is you'll want to tape the the blowout skin into position and then match drill all of the holes. Of course, as you can see, I've already got all the holes match drilled, but what you're looking for is you want the hole uh, centered right where the center of the round part of your cutout is. So you don't want the hole, you know, back here or anything like that. You just want it right there, nice and centered on the position of the hole on the skin. So the next step that I like to do, um, and this is not required, but I like to take an edge roller like this and just bend down all the edges, which is already done here. And as you can see, actually it was, it was already done in the last video too, but you'll want to pre-drill all your holes before you've bent the edges down. And then you can take this edge tool here and just bend down the edges slightly, how you see here. It's a, these are, inexpensive and easily available on aircraft spruce or whatever website you want to find it on and then you can test fit it onto the plane and uh, it, any variations or whatever the case may be around rivets or small waves um, where there might be a small gap you can just remove it and you can see my marks here where I had this and just bend it down slightly more to make sure that this edge is making contact the whole way around. And it just makes the uh, final aesthetic of the panel look a little bit better. All right, so we're prepped for our gasket formation here. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, what I've done here is I've taken Tyvek tape, uh, which is readily available from a local hardware store. Silicone won't stick to it. So it makes a little bit easier process than PVA. PVA uh, would also be a perfectly acceptable method here. Um, so what I've done here is you could see through the Tybeck tape that I've actually overlapped basically to just inside the holes. Um, here I'm just, you know, kind of going through the center of the holes, but essentially what we're trying to do is mask off the exposed part of the skin here because paint won't stick to silicone. So we want to make sure that silicone does not get outside of the, um, the blow off skin here. So you can see I've got the silicone applied. And the other thing I've done, I've applied the Tyvek tape to the inside of the blowout skin as well. So basically we don't want the silicone to touch the actual aluminum here anywhere. Uh, we just want it to be touching the Tyvek. And so essentially what we're doing here is we're making a gasket that will adhere to the fuselage and just be compressed against the uh, aluminum skin. So once that silicone sets all the way up, we can remove this top skin and then we'll just have a silicone gasket there. Um, that'll stop any water from getting in, but it won't be adhered to this aluminum at all. And so the parachute will still be able to function properly. So now you can see the blowout skin has been clecoed into position and we'll go ahead and leave it clecoed here until that silicone sets up. Um, once it's set up, um, we'll be able to remove the blowout panel again and remove all the Tyvek tape and there won't be any squeeze out uh, past here. So we'll be able to paint it still and we'll have a nice gasket uh, adhering to the fuselage and um, the blowout panel will still be functional. So that way the water can't get in and everything's good. Also something to make note of is because we've bent these edges down here, um, there is that little bit of space formed by that edge bend between the panel and the fuselage. So we don't need any shims or anything like that while this sets up. And um, so yeah, we'll let this set up and we'll remove it and I'll show you what it looks like. So we've removed the blowout skin after the silicone has fully cured and we've removed the uh, Tyvek tape. And you might be able to see here in the camera, it's a little difficult to pick up, but I did go ahead and just put a coat of PVA around the outside where the silicone touches to the blowout skin. Uh, there's no reason at all that that silicone should, uh, once it's fully cured, you know, glue to this top skin at all. Uh, but, you know, just out of an abundance of caution, I've put a little bit of a layer of PVA here as well. So uh, let's get it clecoed back onto the uh, 
the fuselage and rivet it on. So here's the completed uh, blow off panel all riveted on. And uh, pretty much the only thing really to kind of keep in mind here is it does seem to work a little bit better to shoot the rivets from the center of the panel towards the corners. Uh, work your way towards each corner. And uh, I think that's just because there's a little bit of play in the way these holes are. And so when you're working your way towards the corner, it kind of, uh, you know, make sure that you don't get any uh, places where the skin kind of ripples off and that you don't get a good mating between the two. But so that's it for the uh, parachute compartment.